istio in a flavor of multi primary okay so th that that's our agenda today so we had another session in which we were discussing and we had already discussed how to set up multi cluster in multi uh, not multi primary but it was primary remote today we'll be discussing about multi primary like each cluster will have their own istio setup as a like owner and how to set it up and how the communication will happen okay so today's agenda is like why do we need multi cloud multi cluster and what all the scenarios we need in which we need uh, multi cloud or multi cluster or uh, multi remote or multi primary or all those discussions will be going through different scenarios of multi cluster like how to deploy like what all the different ways we can deploy then we'll be going through how to set up primary primary that we'll be discussing and i'll be showing the demo and then common few common ask questions will be there and best practices will be discussed so before without any further delay we can start with the meeting okay so main reason of multi cluster when why we need is high availability and disaster recovery so in case of we have a kind of production applications and we need to be highly available and maybe sometimes it's geo locations like based on the geo we want to deploy at multiple places and for disaster recovery if something happens some like one of the cluster goes down at one reason one zone and all then still our applications should be up and running and people will be able to use it sometimes we have a requirement of isolation where we have uh, multiple parts of the applications they need to run on a different different sections or different different clusters all together so that's one of also one of the requirements sometimes it happens latency deployment like i said geo based deployment so if one is there in us one is there in singapore one if one is there in in vietnam one is there in india all those things so whoever is nearer to that location will be able to accessing that cluster and it will be faster response sometimes efficiency also matters like we have a multi cloud environment and we want to have a different different cloud vendors we want to utilize a specific service of a one cloud vendor which is kind of uh, providing a good value to applications that way at that time also we can choose that service from that particular vendor so these are the like few of the main reasons usually we we discuss and we take a decision what and how to do okay so istio deployment ways so usually like uh, we take a decisions based on performance high availability and isolation so these are the kind of driving factors in which we need multi cluster multi cloud or multi cluster environment okay istio can be deployed in multiple ways like one could be single or multiple clusters another can be same or different network another could be single or multiple control planes like multiple istio de versions today we'll be discussing on that single or multi mesh okay then we have a uh, based on our requirement usually we decide further decide what to do like how to segregate or how to group together different clusters to achieve in further high availability or, or even further other requirements and all those can be done like we can see at the right side each cluster so what we can do like uh, highest availability at the top and lowest availability based on that like based on the decisions and based on the requirement we we choose we can choose one of them like each cluster each cluster can have a uh, istio which is very high available then we can have multiple clusters per zone then one cluster per zone like even further down then multiple clusters per region so we can have and one cluster per region that is a lowest availability if if we have only one cluster per region it means it is having if, if something happens to that that region then it, it will be all down and all okay then we have uh, as i was mentioning based on our decision like what and all to be done we have further like we have deployment models so how many ways we can deploy and kind of segregate or, or a kind of uh, create a multiple versions of kind of thing like uh, 
cluster uh, combination i would say so like primary remote on same network so like two clusters are there they are connected via same network it means they can access their services from each other yeah, one of the cluster without needing any external uh, path so and in that case we can have primary remote setup in same cluster so in that case what will happen only one istio will be a control plane so and another will work as a remote like as a slave i'm going to be working as a master so that is the definition at the right side so shared istio control plane like one control plane one istio will be there and that will be managing both primary one also and remote one also and we can have multiple remotes that that's that's not an issue then we can have a primary remote setup in different networks so that this kind of scenario can occur when we have a multi cloud like two different uh, cloud providers are there and we want to have our our clusters and istio manage both the cluster at the same time so we we can have this this kind of setup as well then we have multi primary on the same network it means both are connected via same network in the same network like it means they their applications would be able to access each of the services in another cluster as well but still we want to have multiple istio uh, kind of control plane on the both the clusters to control each and every cluster behavior okay and then we can have a multi primary setup in different network like multi cloud scenario that that kind of setup so we we can have where we we do not have any direct linking of the network between one cluster to another cluster so these are the mainly four kind of deployment models we can mix and match based on the requirement like we can have even multi primary even multi primary combined with uh, uh, primary remote so th those kind of setups can be done so even like further mix and match can be done based on the requirement so one scenario we can discuss here like high availability scenario one in which multi cluster is residing in the same zone so we have two clusters west one west two and both are connected so then we have multi cluster different zone in which like uh, we have one cluster in east one and then another cluster is east two like two clusters are there left side we have one in west one and west two so it's a two different zones we have two clusters and those can be divided like as i was saying we can have mix and match so we can have cluster west one cluster west two as connected together one control plane which is residing in west one and the west two can work as a remote similarly on the right side we can see cluster east one can work as a control like primary and cluster is two can work as a remote of the east one this one so we have two primary and we have two secondary or remote and both are like connected to one is connected to the west one primary and the another one is connected to east one so so different combinations are possible even multiple remote even further remotes are possible can be added into the same control plane so we we can have based on our requirement what we need and it can be done so we can see here primary remote this this setup is primary remote and this right side also again it's primary remote okay and these these two are primary setup we will be going to set up today this part to primary setup we had already covered this this part like primary and remote setup in in our one of the webinar earlier okay so primary remote deployments like just a recap of what we had done already so it looks like something like this one istio will be deployed this is a primary cluster which will be in the primary cluster deployed and it can access the api server of the cluster 2 which is remote to have our service dis discovery and all and they talk to each other via gateways a few kind of characteristics what happens it is having one control plane so we have one point of visibility we can visualize all those even cluster to behavior or what is going on here in in using cluster one only okay and security and any configuration need to be applied in cluster one so for the user it doesn't matter where it is going so for user like any configuration need to be applied it will be applied here and that will take effect in cluster two okay 
one problem or one benefit both it is having one problem is like if if this goes down then it will have impact on the cluster too okay because it's a it's a primary okay but still at the same time the benefit of it is it's having uh, less resource consumption because it's having only one deployment here and there is nothing here on, on the second cluster benefits what we get multi cluster so isolations when we want to segregate different applications at a different level of clusters that we can do here okay and we can monitor as i was mentioning uh, all those cluster 1 and cluster 2 workloads at one place only then we have a second setup we'll be discussing more about this in today's session network 1 network 2 we have two we are we are trying to cover the complex scenario like same network it's comparatively easy to set up we'll be covering the the complex setup like which will have a different multi multi cloud and multi cluster setup in a different network altogether so usually what happens here we'll have one istio setup in net cluster 1 another setup will be in cluster 2 both are connected via istwest gateway okay and we can see here istio d one control plane deployed here another control plane is deployed here and both can access the api server of each other so that if some service is getting deployed in another server like say cluster 2 then istio d of cluster 1 will come to know okay there is service which is deployed here so that, that's where we need a uh, access to api server okay they don't interfere with each other so if if one cluster goes down the this one the another cluster will still be up and running so in case of high availability so the 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 one cluster which is not down still can serve the request so the benefit improved availability configuration isolations like we have control like each of the own control plane is qd will be responsible for their own cluster and even we can have our remote clusters so which will be managed by this this control plane only we can have controlled uh, rollout scan re and all and limited service visibility it means we can even control what all the services to be exposed onto this cluster like not all the services will be accessed directly here okay so now heading towards the demo we'll be seeing how to do and what all the things to be done for for that to set up so before going there i'll just show okay so i have created a name space okay these labels need to be applied so this is for the primary cluster which will be running on aks another is on eks which will be running on another network which is i am calling as a network 2 okay now we'll start deploying one by one so let's go and create that okay so one minute now let me open my terminal okay okay so one prerequisite and uh, important prerequisite of multi cluster is like we need to have a certificate which is kind of uh, generated by the same root ca certificate okay so that's a must requirement that's uh, that is needed to establish a trust between those two clusters otherwise they will not work so usually when we try to install istio in in one of the cluster we go ahead so that time istio generates in own silent certificate and if we try to directly deploy to uh, kind of uh, like two deployments on two different clusters so they'll not uh, establish a trust between each other because their certificates will be different and they'll not be able to communicate with each other so that's why this is a prerequisite we need to have that certificate generated otherwise uh, and that need to come like uh, one root will be there and two intermediate certificates will be generated and those two intermediate cert certificates will be using for our two clusters okay so that's the thing okay 
let's go ahead with that okay yeah so one best practice is that whenever we generate those certificates the root certificate from which we generate two intermediate certificate that need to be kept offline or somewhere safe in a secure vault so that it is not accessible to to public okay okay so we'll be generating root certificate then we'll be generating two uh, cluster certificates so for that let me create Starts folder. Okay, and then I can generate certificate. So for that, I need to do do I'm using still provided tools. To generate certificates, it is easy. Root CA. So this is our. It will generate our main root certificate, and after that, we'll be generating two intermediate certificates, which we'll be using to to deploy HTO in in those two clusters. So we can see here, it is it has generated root CA. Now we'll be generating our uh, cluster certificate. So for that, we need to give name of the cluster. So suppose I have two cluster. One is maybe NAR cluster, which is a case cluster. Okay. And I need to give CA certs. Okay. It will generate, uh, it will create one webinar cluster folder. And inside that, it will generate the, those certificates. using uh, root CA. Okay, so we can see intermediate certificates are generated and stored in, into this folder. Similarly, I'll generate for the other one, which is EKS cluster, name is EKS cluster. I'll use that. Okay, so now certificates are generated. We are good now we can use this one okay okay so now we can see those it is generated here in case webinar cluster and root suite certificates we have here Okay, we'll be creating this namespace and then we'll create secrets of using those cert certificates. And then after that, we'll, we'll install Istio. So let's apply that, create that namespace first. Okay, context, I'll be using a case okay i can show that one what all the things are there let me first give you get tennis context we have a case so this is one of the cluster which is a case cluster and we have a case cluster Okay, fine. So we have two different clusters. So now let's create this name space. Okay, and then I'll be creating for EKS, which is network two in EKS. Fine. So now that is done, name is was created. Now we need to create secret. So directly it is a long command. So I have written it already. 
I'll paste it. So it will create certificate one minute. It need to create it. Okay, I think I need to have it. That context is missing. Let me add that. Okay. No. Okay. So we are creating a secret which is in Istio namespace, which we just created in the AKS using those files. So certs webinar cluster, which is AKS one, and we'll be creating this, we will be doing the same step for EKS as well. Okay, secrets created in each two system. That will verify quickly. Let me create the other one as well. Okay, so we are creating the certificates in secrets using those certificates. So we can see verify here, EKS cluster and context is EKS. Verify, we can verify that quickly. Fine, so keeps it here get secret studio system sorry typo done any case also it's created Fine. So now it is time for Istio installation. Now we can go ahead and install. Okay, so before doing that, we'll be, as I had mentioned, we will be installing Istio today using Helm. So for that, we need to add Helm repo of Istio. And after that, we'll be able to install. So for that, we need to run Helm repo add then HTPS. We have Istio release storage Google APIs dot com and charts. Okay, I need to give the name Istio. Added the um, um, repo update. Fine. Now we are good for the installation. So now we'll be installing Istio one by one in both the clusters. Okay. So Istio installation usually um, is having two parts mainly till we install istio d and if we are installing east west in which case in our case we'll be doing that so we'll be installing using three steps so we need to fire and install three times one will be base which is which contains the istio crds the second will be istio d and then third one will be our uh, east west gateway okay and all those three need to be followed for, for bo both the clusters so let's go ahead and install that so first is um, install where is that install this is the name istio base giving from istio chart which is base here and then we are installing in Istio system. Okay. And here we need to give context is not directly recognizable command or option for it. So here it is having cube context for context. So I'm giving 
AKS. Okay. I'll be installing Istio in both the clusters parallelly, but that can be done even sequentially. Like you can install all the things in one Istio, uh, one cluster, and then go to the another one. But I'll be doing parallelly. So now I'm installing in EKS, the base one. Okay, just installing. It's fine. Then we need to install Studio and install or Studio. It should be Studio. Studio. And then we need to give option like it need to install in uh, Istio system again. Istio system. And we need to give a few options like what all options we want to give. So here it is needed some where minimum needed options we need to set. Yeah, that will be doing. So global dot mesh ID is equal to mesh one. Okay, then we have the set name, cluster name, global dot multi cluster dot cluster name is equal to webinar cluster and we need to set network. global dot work is equal to network one. It's fine. So it's still system it, it need to be installed. SID we set multi cluster cluster name we have set and this one. Okay. And then we need to do the context. Context is equal to I guess. Fine, so it's installing Studio in AKS cluster. Let it complete. Then we'll do the same thing for second cluster. Okay, so here it need to be EKS. Here it need to be network two. And this cluster name would become EKS cluster. Okay, this is done. Then we have to, okay, let it complete. Then we'll be installing our East West Gateway. Fine. So, okay, now let's go ahead and help install this gateway um, install istio ist paste gateway which is from istio gateway and then again it's a same kind of concept we need to set our thing so we'll be installing in istio system only for now, then we need to set options. So here we need to set network gateway option is equal to network one for a case cluster. And we need to set labels. labels. Topology, topology, 
dot it's a scap sequence and if you write istio dot again class network is equal to network one okay that should be fine then cube context scroll to a case let me verify once install this one this is done name this we are drilling as network one and labels we are applying so topology istio io network is equal to network one system okay that it install so it installing in a case cluster this is done now we'll be doing the same thing in a case cluster here we'll be changing it to network 2 and here again network 2 After this, we'll verify the installation. Okay, so it's done. So now we have installed Istio in both the clusters, but still like they'll work, they are continue to work their own, but they'll not be able to communicate with each other still yet because we have not established the trust between those two clusters so that we need to do now okay so let's verify that once whether we have that istio installed or not istio system i guess Fine, and we have EKS. Yeah, so both are up and running. Fine, so now before establishing the trust, we need to expose the services. So we need to like, what are the services are available uh, existing in each cluster that we need to expose so that the communication can start via east west gateway so kubectl apply hyperconnect expose services context equal to aks and aks Fine. So now they are exposed, but still the trust is not there. To establish the trust, we need to create secret or we need to create uh, a secret to access the API server so of each other. So for that, I'll be firing command coctl create remote secret then we need to give name of the cluster so it's a webinar cluster for the first one aks1 and we give context is equal to aks i am giving i assign storing it in one file so that I, I can apply it later. So whatever we are generating, we are creating the, cert, uh, the secret into AKS that need to be applied into the EKS. And whichever certificate, uh, this certificate will create in EKS that need to be applied into AKS, like the cross so that they can access their API server. So AKS. Anything is there, I guess, no. 
request page server dot shamal oh sorry i forgot yeah it's fine context a case i gave so for a case i'll give a case a case and cluster name is a case so this will be created in a case cluster okay and that need to be applied in a case to have cross access fine now keep it here apply a phone s a case api server context equal to E case, yeah. Here we need to be very careful. This this A case one we need to apply into E case to establish the trust. Okay, and we need to apply E case one into A case. Yeah, that, that, that's it. So we are done with the setup. We have already installed. We have configured, we have established the, the trust, but how do we know whether whatever we did so far, all these steps and all, whether every, everything worked fine or everything is working fine. So let's go and verify it. Okay, so we'll be deploying two versions of the application, one version in AKS cluster, the another version in, in EKS cluster. And we'll try to access those two using the same service and use uh, within one of the pod, which is sleep pod to, to see whether we are getting the response from the both, both the clusters or not. So if we are getting the response from the both, both the cluster, it means we did all the setup are correct and everything is working fine. Okay, so for that, let me create one namespace to deploy our application. So keep it here. Create in this test context a case. Okay, let's create any case as well. Then we need to enable it, it's to, it's to enable so that when we deploy, we get a sidecar on the deployment. So let's label that. Give CTL, label NS test, to injection enabled. Okay, again, context. In case. Fine, I'll show files. So far, lot many black screens, so let's see. So we'll be deploying this these services so hello service i'll deploy in both the clusters okay i'll deploy v1 into a case v2 into e case and we'll deploy sleep so that we can curl those applications the these this application and we should be able to verify the responses okay so all these files are there and it will be available in our git link as well so let's go ahead and deploy Keep it here. Hello world service in test namespace. Context. A case. So we need to deploy this service in both, both the clusters. What's wrong? Okay. Flag. 
okay service is created same need to be applied in any case as well then we'll deploy deployments Let's sit here apply hello world deployment v1 test name space a case we'll verify that as well what all the things where it got deployed okay then in each case we'll be deploying v2 After that, we'll deploy sleep pods to both the clusters so that we can curl. So, cube, CTL, apply, head on F. Then we have sleep, test namespace, and context is again both one by one. A case. and e case okay done so let's verify what all the things got deployed kubectl get all test name space context e case So we can verify here in a case cluster we have hello world v1 deployed here okay in e case cluster we have hello world version 2 deployed service hello world is there service hello world is there so now it's time to curl and see the behavior whether it's working fine or not okay so i'll open another terminal so that we can see what's going on okay clear so i'll be using first exec into this one capacity test and context is webinar cluster SH. it's fine i call the terminal let's curl curl hello world which is running on 5000 port and we'll fire one endpoint. Okay, hello, we are getting from version one. Perfect. So we can see we are getting the response from v1, v2, v2, v1, v2, v1. So this one I logged in in AKS cluster, now we'll do the same thing for EKS cluster now. Okay. So let's go there and check one minute before that I do. I need a context of that. Let me get it out. Terminal. Okay. 
okay so i need a case cluster context i need to store it somewhere okay let me keep it somewhere fine now i'll be logging or i'll be entering into one of the pods sleep pod in e case copy give ctl exec test then context Squared to weakest cluster context. I copied it. It's a big one. Okay, and then message. We got the terminal. Okay, now we'll do again same thing. Curl. Hello. Vault. Then five thousand port and um, hello. Okay, we are getting the response from V two, V one. Perfect. So we can see we are getting the responses from both the both the clusters, both the applications. So we can see here V one was deployed in a case. E2 was deployed in EKS, but still we are able to access the responses or we are able to get the responses from both, both those deployments, which are running on two different clusters. So that's the thing. That's all what we did and it is working fine. We deployed it, we tested it, it it's working fine. Okay, so few common questions usually people may ask like can we not implement individual istio in cluster rather than the multi primary like what it means is why to connect these two clusters like it is working independently why to cl cl club this like why to connect this so the thing is if we do that and if services from cluster 1 wants to communicate with service from cluster two, they need to go via external means, which is ingress, via ingress. And in that case, this cluster two service need to expose those endpoints in the ingress and that it will take the path to access that one that will unnecessarily create kind of uh, extra complexities. Plus the service A needs to know which endpoint has been exposed here. So some extra things need to be done. In the second case where we connect this one, so now the service B still looks to service e, A as it is in the same cluster. It, it is not knowing whether it is staying in the same cluster or whether it's going in another cluster. So it's a Istio and Kubernetes together does the do job of forwarding the request from one cluster to the another cluster. So it reduces the effort significantly. Okay, so service discovery and all it, it is seamless where if we have separate, we will not be able to know. Then we have another question, common question. Can we not handle the case of multi-primary using primary remote? Okay, so it means why to have go for a primary primary instead of uh, why can we go as a primary remote? So as we have already discussed primary and remote case, only one control plane is there. And if that control plane goes down, it can affect the functionality of remote cluster. So that's where, so in those cases, primary primary is needed. But if we have something in backup and uh, like we, we can create the replication as we have seen it here. Yeah, so in this case can be done because we have multiple replicas, multiple setup, so even if this goes down, this will be able to handle those requests. So we can mix and match and create multiple things. Okay. 
that's all for the today's session if you have any question at any point of time feel free to contact us at contact at thank you